Whoever wins this series between the Brooklyn Nets and Milwaukee Bucks could very well go on to win the NBA title. Many expect the Nets big three to roll through the East, but the Bucks have a generationally great defense with a damn good trio of their own. This video predicts who will come out on top between the Greek Freak and the Snake, and how many games will this series go? Stick around to find out. In a lot of ways, Milwaukee's slayed the dragon after posting the NBA's best net rating in the first round while thoroughly dominating the Heat. The Bucks also posted the best defensive rating of any team by a full six points. That was the lowest mark for any team in a playoff series in the last five years. The Heat were flawed, but the team was largely the same group that stunned Milwaukee in the second round and went on to win the conference championship in 2020. You could argue that the Heat were just bubble guppies, Come on, man. Come on. but in this most recent series, the Bucks' defense threw a different game plan at Jimmy Butler and completely shut him down. Milwaukee threw various different defenders at Butler from Pat Connaughton to Drew Holiday and of course the Greek Freak, all getting opportunities to guard the Heat forward one-on-one. -on -one. But the biggest Jimmy stopper was one of the best perimeter defenders in the league, P.J. Tucker. The trade for Tucker at the deadline for Milwaukee was a gem of an acquisition because not only did Tucker maul Jimmy on the defensive end, not allowing him an inch of space, but PJ's vocal leadership to this Bucks team has been damn valuable. From the moment he was moved from the Houston Rockets to join the Deer, Tucker's made it a point of emphasis to change the way people think of this Bucks team. People think Giannis is going to fold again, that the Bucks defense isn't built to go into the later rounds. But PJ's come in and completely changed this team's culture. But for the Bucks, the work is obviously far from done. It's a Milwaukee franchise that's reached the conference finals only one time since 2001. They did it back in 2019 against the Toronto Raptors. They actually came up two wins short of the finals in that series. But this year in 2021, they'll face an absolute juggernaut in the second round. The team favored by Vegas by a wide margin to win the title in the Brooklyn Nets. The pressure is going to be on Brooklyn's offense going up against Milwaukee's defense. The Nets' big three of Kevin Durant, James Harden, and Kyrie Irving is among the best ever assembled in NBA history, but they need the hardware to truly cement their status as a trio. They led their Nets to score 128 points per 100 possessions against the Celtics, which was the highest playoff mark over the last quarter of a century. And while each member of the potentially historically great threesome is absolutely lethal, due to a few of their role players, the Nets are a threat offensively even when they only have one of their stars on the floor. The reputable marksman Joe Harris led the league in three-point percentage during the regular season, and he improved on his efficiency in the first round this year. The veteran floor spacer shot 50% from distance in five games against Boston, which included a game where he made seven threes and dropped 25 points. Joe rarely has an off night, and he's a player you have to watch out for, doubling Durant, Irving, or Harden by bringing the man that's guarding Joe over always results in a splash. Bruce Brown's all-out hustle and off-ball awareness with the ability to cut to the basket has greatly contributed to the cause. Blake Griffin's far from the Lob City version of himself, but he's still good for a shocking jam or two. Jeff Green will likely return from injury in Game 1, but those are really your only three reliable role players. The big three has to carry the scoring load for the most part, which isn't usually a problem. They've only played 13 games together, but the Snake, Uncle Drew, and the Beard are 10-3 and three in those games. The question's going to be, is their lack of a rhythm developed over a long stretch of games ultimately going to cost them against a Milwaukee team who's been molding itself into the team they are now over the last six months? On the other hand, the question for Milwaukee is whether or not their defense is capable of stepping up to the challenge against a combination of talent on one team that we've never quite seen before. But it sure seemed like Milwaukee's defense was ready for the task against Miami as the Heat produced the NBA's worst offensive rating in the first round at 95.4. Milwaukee has three elite lockdown defenders in Giannis Adetokounmpo, Drew Holiday, and Chris Middleton, which allows them to switch onto any net star without giving up an open drive or an easy shot off a perimeter screen. Whether that's good enough to halt a historically efficient offensive unit is a fair question still. 
But what I'm most interested to see play out in this second round battle is how Brooklyn's defense is going to handle Adetokounmpo and the Bucks' offense. The Nets are the worst defense, on paper at least, that Giannis has ever played against throughout his six times going to the playoffs. The second worst defense he played against came back in 2019 against the Detroit Pistons. He averaged 26 and 12 in that series in only 28 minutes per game. Since dealing Jarrett Allen away in the trade for James Harden back in February, the Nets haven't found a consistent rim protecting or rebounding presence, and in the first round, they opted for a small ball lineup in every game. While that worked against a banged up Celtics defense, where they could play whoever offense on Evan Fournier, Brooklyn's mini lineups won't work against Milwaukee, a lengthy team who attacks the boards and is nearly unstoppable when Adetokounmpo charges downhill. Even the Celtics exposed Blake Griffin in pick and roll scenarios, and other than BG to slow down Giannis, which he rarely does, he's not capable of at his age, Kevin Durant is really the only option to put on Giannis. I mean, Uncle Jeff Green just doesn't have the athleticism anymore, and based off all that, I expect Giannis to put up 30 to 40 points per game in this series. In the regular season in three games against Brooklyn, he averaged damn near 40 points, so we'll see how Steve Nash and the Brooklyn coaching staff adjust to him. All things considered, this is an even duel between two top-tier championship threats. As a fan, your initial instincts lead you to pick the more talented team, but when you examine the matchup a tad bit further, you realize there's simply too many questions about how the Nets will defend the Bucks. But to be fair, there's a lot of questions about whether the Nets can be defended at all. It's also fair to wonder if Brooklyn's core is healthy enough to maintain the uber-efficient pace throughout another series. Here's a few stats that could get you thinking another way about this series and the regular season. Griffin allowed 1.21 points per possession on isolations. That was the second worst mark among 87 NBA players who defended at least 50 isolation possessions. Jason Tatum scored 13 of his 50 points against Griffin in Game 3 and had more success in that regard in Game 4. Secondly, in the paint, the Celtics big men shot a beaming 69% against Griffin when he played at center. Griffin's one of this team's only true big men. They're going to rely on him a lot in these scenarios, so it's hard to see the flurry of Giannis, Middleton, and Holiday not exposing him all night. Additionally, boxing out and securing boards on the back end of possessions is something the Nets really struggle with, as they have the lowest rebounding percentage of all 15 playoff teams at 64.9. Across from them, Milwaukee was second among all playoff teams in rebounding percentage, only behind the team Brooklyn faced in the first round, the Boston Celtics. So it'll be interesting to see if Giannis Adetokounmpo, PJ Tucker, and Brooke Lopez will dominate in that area. Overall, we haven't seen this Nets lineup long enough to fully trust it against the best defense in the postseason. However, we also haven't seen Milwaukee's playoff-centric offensive scheme tested against a squad like Brooklyn. It's hard to envision either side wilting early in a series that neither franchise can afford to lose. I see both teams trading wins over the first few games of this series, and the Nets three-man attack to ultimately wither under the pressure of a generationally great Milwaukee defense. I have the Bucks winning this potentially all-time great second round matchup in six games, and Giannis, I expect to cement himself as the best player in the world but I want to know your takes and who do you have winning this series in the comments section below. Be sure to leave a like to help this video spread to more people. Go check out my last video on the Atlanta Hawks. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.